This is a special tribute to gospel singing sensations, the world-famous Davis sisters. The Davis sisters grew up singing at Philadelphia's Mount Zion, fire-baptized Holiness Church. After serving in the Women's Air Corps during World War II, Ruth organized her sisters into a formal group in 1945. She was inspired early on by the Wings Over Jordan Choir, one-time gospel singer Dinah Washington and male quartets, particularly Philadelphia's Dixie Hummingbirds. The Davis sisters first cut two singles for the local Apex label in May 1949. With Imogene Green added to the lineup, they recorded prolifically for Gotham Records, another Philly label, from July 1949 to October 1952. Hits for Gotham included Jesus Steps Right In, By and By, and Too Close to Heaven. This old soul of mine. The Sisters were the first female group to sing the hard gospel that appeared in the early 1950s and was totally different from the Baptist style of singing, which emphasized beauty of tone, precise rhythm, and occasional ornamentation. Hard gospel was characterized by straining the voice during periods of spiritual ecstasy, singing at the extremes of ranges, repeating words or syllables, adding lots of interjections, and acting out songs with motions, stoops, and movements. On the recommendation of Gertrude Ward, the mother of Clara Ward and manager of the Philadelphia-based Ward Singers, Savoy signed the Davis Sisters in 1955. Their first session for the company, on February 9th of that year, yielded the group's biggest hit The Rousing Twelve Gates to the City, which featured Dublin's robust baritone, followed by Ruth's powerful, emotion-charged contralto. The session also introduced the remarkably elastic voice of Jackie Verdell, Green's replacement in the group, on the song He's My King. Those two songs, along with eight others from 1955, comprise 12 Gates to the City, the first of 11 Davis Sisters releases by Savoy through 1968. Although Ruth Davis was known as baby sis to family, friends and countless fans, Ruth Davis was actually the oldest of the four siblings who recorded as the famous Davis sisters, as they were billed by Savoy Records during their 13 years, 1955 through 1968, with the Newark, New Jersey-based company. Born in Philadelphia on April 19, 1927, she was joined in the group by sisters Thelma, Audrey, Alfreda, a fifth sister, Edna, often joined them for live performances, but never recorded with them in the studio. A cousin, pianist and vocalist Curtis Dublin, 1928 through 1964, rounded out the original group. Ruth Davis was the hardest female belter in gospel, scared of no man when it came to squalling. Anthony Heilbert observed in his book The Gospel Sound, Good News and Hard Times. At home she'd enthrall friends with her blues, and all the singers insist she could have been another Dinah Washington or Big Mabel. Many local concerts were given at the Met Theatre in Philadelphia. The sisters always packed the house and were always late arriving. People would wait at the door for them to arrive. They would look for Alfreda because she always led them in their march to the stage to begin singing. Their live performances were awesome, and they would tear the house down. Ruth Davis had such a huge, wide-ranging metallic contralto of extraordinary power and force and squalling, she could just start up a song without any introduction or gimmicks. 
When she would sing Shine On Me, she would throw her handkerchief in the air. The crowd would be ecstatic, and many people were slain under the spirit. When Thelma would sing Jesus, the crowd really responded enthusiastically. The Davis sisters attire was usually plain choir robes, and in the early days they were only accompanied by piano played by Curtis Dublin. The famous Davis sisters were involved in the movement of the cappella quartet sound into female group singing with instrumental accompaniment. Their fellow artists typically praised their singing as spirit-filled. Ruth Davis's solos were also overpowering in their own way. Her recordings of songs such as Jesus Steps Right In and Too Close to Heaven disclose the glory of her instrument, a huge, wide-ranging metallic contralto of great beauty and extraordinary power and force and squalling. The Davis sisters attracted two great singers in their most fruitful periods to help fill out their sound. Imogene Green, who possessed a husky alto of great sensuous beauty and the phenomenal Jackie Verdell who replaced Green in 1955. She brought a mezzo-soprano of intense brightness and clarity to the group. Few singers could match her in the mournful gospel blues genre. She would demolish churches with her renditions of Lord Don't Leave Me and following him. The Davis sisters also accompanied their singing with a rhythmic and sometimes spontaneous spirited choreography that other singers, such as Dorothy Love Coates and the Ward singers, later made famous. The Davis sisters were heavily influenced at this time by Gertrude Ward, the organizing spirit behind the Ward singers, and a guiding light for gospel music in America. Ray Charles also modeled the sound of his backup group, the Raylettes, on groups such as the Davis Sisters and the Caravans. Aretha Franklin once called Jackie Verdell one of the best and most underrated female soul singers of all time. Born in Philadelphia on November 5, 1937, Verdell became second only to Ruth as the group's star soloist. She left the group on a number of occasions over the years to record a few R&B singles for Peacock, Decca and Cora labels, to perform in musical theater productions, and to do background vocals by the likes of Wilson Pickett, D.D. Warwick, Van Morrison and Horace Silver. She returned to the Davis sisters, however, for their final album, 1981's The Storm Is Passing Over, with a lineup that consisted of Audrey and Alfreda Davis, Burdell and Michelle White. Verdell died on August 3, 1991. Ruth left the Davis sisters in 1962 due to a falling out with her sisters and formed a new group called the Ruth Davis Specials of New York City. They recorded one album that Savoy issued as being by Ruth Davis and the Davis Singers. In the meantime, the remainder of the group Alfreda and Audrey Davis, Verdell, Dublin and newcomer Leela Dargan cut a live album in Little Rock, Arkansas, for RCA Victor. By 1966, however, Ruth had rejoined her sisters, with Cynthia Young in place of Verdell, and was recording again for Savoy. Prior to Ruth's death on January 2, 1970, from complications of diabetes, high blood pressure and liver and kidney disease, the Davis sisters made an album for Hob Records.
Personnel changes occurred in the group in the 1960s also, and all later recordings were made on regional labels about every five years up until around 1985. Sometimes a single 45 RPM and sometimes an entire album, and sometimes not with the full group. Several sides were recorded for Ozzy Kadena's startup label Choice Records in New Jersey, after he, too, left Savoy Record Company. Their last full album in the 1980s was so popular that they repressed it to meet demand, but they issued it with a different cover. One shows the group standing under a rainbow, the other album cover is a photograph of the Davis sisters in front of a grand piano. Several television appearances are still available to the public on video websites, and some older recordings are now reissued on compact disc. As of 2023, all of the Davis sisters, their parents and siblings are deceased. Only children and grandchildren and three in-laws survive. Although, they are no longer with us. Their music and their memory will live on, and they are truly a legend in gospel music.